Hello and welcome to Chemcracker. Today we are looking at calculating enthalpy change of formation using enthalpy change of combustion data. I want to start by uh, looking at the relationship between enthalpy change of formation and combustion. Now, generally speaking, um, for formation is speaking about enthalpy change of formation is speaking about forming one mole of a compound all right um, from its elements under standard conditions so you're forming a compound from the elements um, under standard conditions specifically of course we're speaking about formation of one mole of the compound from its elements under standard conditions and the relationship with combustion is that if I burn the elements that make up the compound, that is, to react it with oxygen completely, I will get the same combustion products as if I burn the compound itself. So if I react the elements with oxygen, I get the same combustion products. All right? Same combustion products as if I burn the product alone. Right? That is, when I say product, I mean the compound formed in the formation reaction. Now, this enables us to, to, um, to decipher an, what we call an enthalpy cycle. So if we label the energy terms here, we can work out the enthalpy cycle and the Hess law relationship and helps calculate um, enthalpy change formation. So formation involves formation of the compound from the elements. This move right here is representing delta HF. Enthalpy change of formation of this compound. And burning of the elements refers to, yes, burning of... Um, that's delta HC, right? And put theta to indicate standard conditions. All right, so delta HC of the elements, all right? Elements, all right? Delta HC of the elements. And over here, we're talking about delta HC burning of the compound itself. So delta HC of the compounds, right? Of the compound. So if we apply Hess's law, remember Hess's law says that look, um, the enthalpy change of a reaction is independent of the route taken. Right, as long as the initial and final conditions are the same. In other words, going from elements to compound, going from elements to compound, like that directly, right, is the same as coming down to combustion products, right, and then going up to the compound. All right, so that's what Hess's law says. If I go from elements to compound directly, or I can burn the elements and then go from the combustion products up to the compound. The enthalpy change is the same because it's independent of the root taken. So what does that mean? How can we work out the Hess law relationship for these, for these enthalpy changes? Now what that means then is that the delta HF of the compound is equal to delta HC right, of the elements right, right, that's coming down here and then going up 
right? Now, delta HC of the compound is coming down. So to go to the opposite direction, it's the negative of coming down, all right? So going up is a negative of coming down. So you're adding minus delta HC of the compound, or you're subtracting delta HC of the compound. Same thing, all right? Delta HC of your compounds. All right, your compound. All right, and that's how you decipher delta HF from the combustion data of the elements and the compound. Now you can just simply fill in the values, right? But you have to be a little bit careful. You have to be a little bit careful because delta HC of the elements, you have to think carefully about how much of each element is used to form one mole of the compound. It's not always just one mole, but you have to adjust according to the number of moles of the elements. Let's do a live example of that. Well, let's look at this specific um, example, but before I do that, I want to, I want to point out that this this relationship is sometimes written like this. Delta HF is equal to delta HC of the reactants minus delta HC of the product. Because for a formation reaction, of course, the elements are the reactants, aren't they? They are the reactants. And the compound is the product. All right, so just want to point that out. So that you, if you see that, do not be surprised. All right, the elements are the reactants, and um, the compound is the product. So it is written like this. Let's take a look at this specific example here. I want to look at this specific example here. Part B of this question says, use an energy cycle and the data below to determine the standard enthalpy change of formation of methane. All right, so in the table, you're given the enthalpy change of combustion standard for methane. All right, um, formation of methane. So methane would be the product, right, the compound that you're forming. Um, and you're forming it from its elements, which would be carbon and hydrogen. So these are the combustion, enthalpy change of combustion for the reactants and enthalpy change of combustion for the products. And rem remember what we just said. If we have the, the enthalpy change of combustion for the elements or reactants, and we have the enthalpy change of combustion of the product or the compound, we can work on delta HF. All right? So what we're going to do is just, I'm just going to simply slot these in right here, okay, and see uh, how we can um, work that out. Okay, so continuing. So what we're going to say, okay, let's let's put in the compound. So the compound that we're speaking about is, is methane. So I'm just going to put in the methane. All right, so we're going to put methane here. Methane is CH4, and that's a gas. Okay, so we have our product. Or we have our compound that we are looking for. I'm just going to erase this so it looks a bit more um, orderly. And we also can put in the elements involved, right? Or the reactants involved. So the elements that make up methane are carbon and hydrogen, right? Carbon and hydrogen. So let's put in carbon and hydrogen. So carbon in its standard state is a solid and we usually use graphite as this standard form of carbon and we need to add hydrogen to that to make methane all right hydrogen is a gas all right okay and of course we're going to need two moles of hydrogen to balance that all right so there we go and when we burn carbon, 
right? When we burn carbon, we can take either side. When we burn carbon, what are we going to get? We are going to get um, completely burning carbon in oxygen is going to give us carbon dioxide gas. Okay? And if we burn hydrogen, of course, in oxygen, we're going to get water. Okay? And if we take the other side, if we burn carb, uh, methane, we're going to get carbon dioxide and water. So we have to balance the hydrogen here. We have two hydrogens here, so we need two here to balance that. Okay? And we can also balance um, the oxygens needed. All right? So we can go um, balance the oxygens needed. How many oxygen do we need? There's two here and two twos. Uh, two ones, two, so that's four overall. So we're going to need two molecules of oxygen. If we need two molecules on the left, on the right hand side, we need the same amount on the left hand side because we're burning the same substances and the same amounts. We can also now substitute in the specific enthalpy change values. All right, so if we go, okay, this is. Um, Delta 8C, so let's change that color back to red. All right, so this is Delta HC, all right, of the compound or the product. This is methane, so we're burning methane. So let's fix that up. So we're burning methane. Um, so that's CH4, yes. And we're burning one mole of methane. So this change represents delta HC of methane. Over on the left hand side, uh, we are burning carbon. All right, so let's be specific about this. We're burning carbon over here. Um, and that's not the only thing we're burning. So I'm going to put carbon there. All right, carbon. But we're also burning. We're also burning hydrogen. We're also burning hydrogen. So we're talking about delta HC of um, hydrogen as well. All right, H2, delta HC of H2. Now, but if we look at this carefully, delta HC of H2 represents the burning of one mole of hydrogen. But we're burning two moles. So it's two times delta HC of hydrogen, okay? So we're burning one mole of carbon, and we're also burning two moles of hydrogen. So basically what we can now do is to amend our Hess law relationship. So we're still finding delta HF, and delta HF is equal to this move down here plus that move up there, and it doesn't change. So what we have to do is to change this up. So, okay, so we're making delta HF then the subject, all right, of what we're trying to find. And we're saying that um, we're going to burn the reactants first and then form the product here from the, from the burn compound, from the burn products. So... That is delta HC of the reactants. Delta HC of the reactants come to works out to be these here in detail. Okay, so it's going to be delta HC of carbon, All right? All right, plus two times delta H. All right, C of hydrogen minus delta H C of the product which is methane all right and then from there now what we have to do is to plug in our values here are values here Values are minus 890, minus 394, minus 286. 
all right so this is going to be equal to all right minus 394 all right plus 2 times minus 286 all right minus minus all right 890 Wow, that's not looking neat. And that all comes to... And that's calculating enthalpy change of formation from enthalpy change of combustion data. See you next time on ChemCraft.